Well, greetings everybody. Greetings from the beautiful central coast of Australia. Terrigal is the name of where I am. Day two, I think I have escaped the onslaught of the flies. <laughs> I know, it's like, I had somebody in my video yesterday, I was being bothered by all these flies. They were rebuking the spirit of Beelzebub, which means Lord of the Flies, so thank you, whoever it was. I think you've not only rebuked them, you gave me wisdom and strategy on how to get away from them. So I have ascended, I have come up here. I'll show you where I am. I walked up to this like little cave. So hey everybody. I think it's around like 6 slash 7 p.m. in the Dallas area, um, Central, Eastern Standard Time, all that. So not sure how many folks are popping on right now. It's about dinner time. But greetings. I hope you're all doing very well. Just wanted to come on and share an update and an encouraging word because, you know, it's fun to hear about people's travels and journeys and adventures. But I prefer sharing whatever insight that I feel like the Lord has given me that ultimately would be helpful to you. So a couple of things, actually. Goodness, I didn't even get to share about this yesterday. Hey, everybody, let me know where you're watching from. And oh, my God, do I have a bee flying now? Now, flies I can deal with if there's a bee bothering me. Yeah, I, I need to get delivered from fear of bees. So that's a whole whole other thing about me that you may not know. <laughs> just as you're coming on recently, I had a situation. I mean, there are situations that you just they're the things of nightmares, really. I had a situation in our home in Texas where I was on the phone with a friend and I was just going around opening the windows. I was opening the, the blinds for the windows. And I don't, so let me just reiterate, I don't like bees. I don't, particularly wasps. Honeybees, I'm fine, but bumblebees are fine. Uh, wasps are like evil to me. So what happened is I was opening up the blinds and I opened up the blinds in our living room and behind each set of blinds, no joke, were like two or three hornets inside the house on the windows, which was terrifying. I mean, I felt all sorts of fear. I literally, it was that kind of paralyzing fear where I was absolutely terrified. But the Lord, I believe, gave me victory over that fear because I'm like, okay, well, I, my, I, I'm not even sure if my wife or daughter are allergic because they've had, um, my wife had a bad reaction one time when she got stung. So here I am, it's like, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna be fearful or am I gonna actually rise up and defeat the wasps? So I don't know what I rigged up. I used some sort of interesting sweeper device. I, and they were just, they are stationary. So I went and killed them all single-handedly. And after that, I felt very empowered. So <laughs> I guess I get, yeah, they're, they're just evil creatures, those wasps. But bottom line is this, at least it's uh, flies here, not wasps. So just letting you know, just sharing some stories while you're coming on. Just, just a couple of things. Yesterday was a powerful service. We did a regional gathering in an area called Newcastle. And I taught on the counsel of the Lord. What does it mean as a prophet or prophetic person to enter into a place called the counsel of the Lord? I'm very grateful for Robert Henderson. I always want to give honor where it's due because he was the person who first introduced me to the concept or the spiritual dimension of the counsel of the Lord. But it's not something that, you know, any kind of teacher came up with. That's actually a very biblical con uh, concept. As I was reading through Jeremiah and you read through the uh, major and minor prophets, but particularly it was Jeremiah who gave language to it. He talks about prophets he, he contrasts prophets who have stood in the counsel of the Lord versus prophets who are prophesying out of their own soul, out of their own mind, out of their own desires, and basically prophesying what they know the people want them to prophesy as opposed to what God is speaking. And we know what God is speaking when we stand in the spiritual dimension called the counsel of the Lord. You know what was beautiful about last night? I taught on that and you know, God, Holy Spirit came and moved in a wonderful way. But what happened next what happened next at the end of the gathering cannot be attributed to any hype, manufacturing, can't be attributed to my message. It can be attributed to, I think, a collection of people. We had a good group of people there, a people who said, God, more than anything, more than prophesying, more than even hearing the voice of God, so I have something insightful, revelatory to say, more than any of that, God, we just wanna be in your presence. And you know what, here, I'm gonna let you see the backdrop here, which is a really stunning place. And that's exactly what happened at the end of the meeting last night. So I preached my message. We kind of did some business in the spirit in terms of praying for certain things. Uh, God was sharing uh, prophetically about a certain, a few different things. We did all, I, I guess the bottom line is we did the stuff. We did kind of business in the spirit. 
But then it was like we did not want the meeting to end because here's what I felt like the Lord revealed. He said, you know what? You've entered my council. In fact, the dimension that we talked about opened up that council of the Lord. We recognized we were standing in his council. He shared things with us. But when God stopped speaking, and this is beautiful because I actually believe this is going to set somebody free where we're always like, I got to hear what God's saying. I got to hear what God's saying. Yes, let's not make an idol out of, this is going to sound like an interesting concept because God wants to talk to you. I think sometimes we make an idol out of what God is saying to where we actually dismiss the primary or the superior pleasure of being in his presence. There's not even his, I'm grateful for his voice. I'm grateful for when he gives us intel. I'm grateful for when he gives us prophetic insight and information. Absolutely all of that. We're supposed to go after that. The Bible says very clearly, Apostle Paul makes it clear. We're, earnestly desire the gifts of the spirit especially that you prophesy yes 100 percent. but at the end of the day i felt like the lord saying a company of my friends have come into my presence i've opened my counsel to them i have spoken we did what we were supposed to do but then it was like he stopped speaking but he was still there isn't that powerful because god's and it's almost like he was looking for those willing to linger in his presence they weren't there just to get a word they weren't there just to get intel or information from heaven. Um, and, and it was the majority of the group, like the majority of the people. We just lingered in his presence. Why? He had opened his counsel. He spoke with us. He talked with us. But then it was like God intentionally stopped speaking to see who would linger in my presence just to be with me, whether I spoke or not. And it was powerful and it was beautiful. And it was one of those services, one of those gatherings where can't manufacture it. We could have stayed there all night. We, we, there, there's those moments in the presence of God where you feel like I could stay in this all night. And it was beautiful. So really encouraged me, really blessed me. And then today we met with just a wonderful, uh, wonderful man locally here. But God is using, and I'll end with this because this is the little subject matter I put up. God is using this man. I believe God's raising up people all over the earth right now who are actually called to build, to rebuild the ancient ruins. And what does that mean? Because it sounds like spiritual language. To actually restore desolate cities. And that's exactly what God is using this guy for in a very measurable, tangible way to rebuild a city. To actually see a city that was a ghost town, that was vacant, that was, uh, that really... I would say it was nearly an embarrassment, um, but God has used this guy. God has anointed him to go into that. And as a result, you see commerce returning. You see the, econ the economy and the economics of that city being stimulated in a powerful way. And you see a real, and it's amazing because a lot of those who are engaging the city's economy by opening businesses and repopulating the city basically uh, are, are believers. And I felt like, you know what? I believe God is extending that assignment. He's extending that scepter to many here in the United States, many around the world, where we are called to go find places that have been desolate, that have been destroyed, that have been, um, that are kind of what we consider to be ruins. I see that right now in Detroit. We've seen that in Waco, Texas, where the voice of Waco, it's funny, while we, were, while we were talking to this guy, the Lord spoke to me, cities have a voice. Huh, they have a voice in the spirit realm. They say there's something that comes out of a city that speaks of its personality and identity. A city has a voice. And, you know, previously, I'm sure, as many of you know, Waco, Texas had a voice and it was not a good one. The message, the voice of Waco, Texas for quite some time was this is a city that has been sadly left in the aftermath of demonic cult activity. And sadly, for many, for many years, Waco was associated with... Um, cults and compounds and a lot of demonic things. Isn't it amazing though how God has raised up Chip and Joanna Gaines and if you're not familiar with them obviously it's the folks on I think it's TLC who have the show Fixer Upper. They're believers. I mean these are these are dedicated believers, followers of Jesus. I believe they might still attend a church called Antioch in that area which is an Assemblies of God, Holy Spirit type of church. And I'm amazed at how God has used them to rebuild that city, to restore a city that was brought, at least spiritually, and I would say even economically and reputationally, into a place of desolation. I want to prophesy even right now, Father God, would you raise up the builders, God? And the Lord says even now, the call to build cities is just as important and is just as spiritual as the call to build people ministerially. Sometimes what happens is 
we, we and I say this all the time, and people like Lance Wall now have done a far, a far better job articulating this than myself, but we believe the, the benchmark, the watermark of spiritual service to God is like being in the ministry, working in a church, serving in a church context. And that's important, but that's not the benchmark. That's not the high watermark of service to God. The high watermark of service to God is being a good steward of the talents and gifts and the acumen he's put inside of you is recognizing those things that irritate you and then not even just that but what what irritation in your life provokes you to pursue a solution my goodness we're in something right now probably because it's just so beautiful here it's so easy to be close to god i feel like the lord is saying and i'm i'm done you know a lot of people are trying to figure out what their calling and assignment is and that type of thing well two things well three things really number one and then i'm done (laughs) Number one, identify what your gifts, talents, and abilities are. And I think the church has a good context for that because we go through spiritual gifts assessments and all that. that. That's good, but it doesn't end there. Figure out what your gifts, talents, and abilities are. Number two, what are the things that irritate you? What are the things that when you read about them in the news or you see them in your city or you see them in your nation, what are the things that really irritate you, that grab hold, that, that, that you can't shake? But it's not good enough just to be irritated because... You know, there's a lot of stuff that irritates us. We scroll, we scroll through our news every day. There's certainly a lot of irritation points. Um, you, there's a good likelihood you're called to do something about it, about that source of irritation. If the source of irritation produces a desire in you to pursue God for a supernatural prophetic solution. If irritation provokes you to pursue solution, then that's something I would encourage you strongly to talk with God about because there might be a real assignment there. So anyway, praise God. Terry, I love Australia too. Thank you guys for tuning in. I just wanted to share this. And again, this is, I'm up in my little cavern right now. I, 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 I mean, I feel absolutely spoiled being here. So grateful for Hope You See, for Dave Balestri, Darlene and Mark Check. Um, I, I, I feel absolutely spoiled. Some of the most wonderful people on the planet. But yes, I love being here. Pray for Australia that God is moving here in a powerful way. And he's giving me some amazing blueprints while I'm here to take back to the States. And again, I'm believing that we're going to see a mighty, what's three? Oh, I told you. Sorry, Susan, just want to make it very clear. So three things to identify what you're, uh, what you might, I'm not going to say guaranteed, but what you might be called to do. Number one, gifts and talents. Okay. Identify what your gifts and talents are. Number two, what is the thing that produces an irritation in your life? But number three, because there's a lot of things that irritate us, but number three, what irritation do you feel led by the Lord to pursue a solution for? That, I believe when you actually start looking at those three things, you're on your way to discovering a gift. You're on your way to discovering what the Lord might have for you as an assignment. So thank you guys. Look forward to talking to you soon. Um, and yeah, I, I've tried Vegemites. Yeah, that's that was a very interesting experience. Somebody was talking about eating something here. That's one thing that... I don't know if I can go back and have any more of that. So thank you, Daniel Zelli, for the Vegemite. That that I think I might need a I might need a sozo restoring the foundations, some kind of deliverance after that. Always fun. All right. Good night, everybody. Well, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.